The rest of the older kids can turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. I told you I love the book of Isaiah. As I shared uh, last week, God led me to the book of Isaiah during a very low time in my life. And God's word from the book of Isaiah proved to be strengthening to my heart, it proved to be hopeful to my heart. I want to read just two verses from Isaiah chapter 43 as a beginning, as a springboard into what we're going to talk about this morning. Isaiah chapter 43. This is God, not man. This is God speaking through a humble, willing servant. And it says here, but now this is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, fear not. Tell somebody next to you, fear not. Fear not. One of, I believe, about 366 times in the Bible that it says fear not. You think God's trying to get something across to his people. Fear not, don't be afraid. For I have redeemed you. In other words, I have ransomed your life. I have summoned you by name or called you by name. You are mine. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Then it goes on to say how precious you are in his sight. It goes on to say that, that he's even willing to to give other nations and other people for your ransom. You know that we've been rans ransomed literally? When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he took our place. He paid the price. He paid the payment so we can go free. Bless you. Bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. What I want to do is look at, at this portion of Scripture along with two other passages in the Old Testament. As you see here, it talks about waters. It talks about flood waters and so forth. Then it talks about fire. And you'll see this in Scripture on a regular basis. You'll see God use these, these metaphors or these examples to communicate some truth to His people. We know in the New Testament, the Bible says that, actually the Apostle Paul says that the things written in the Old Testament are there for our what? Example or our instruction. So even though it's very poetic to read about the fact that that he's going to be with us as we pass through the waters and the rivers won't overflow us and so forth. And when we walk through the fire, we'll not be burned. It's very poetic, right? As he used the, uses these pictures, he's trying to communicate something to us. The fact that he uses water it is, is, and, and fire is an example to describe the trials or sufferings of life. Now, the interesting thing is we do need water to survive, don't we? How many folks have their water so far today? Got to have it. And fire is a very handy thing. It keeps us warm. It helps us cook our food and so forth. But water and fire out of control is deadly. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. But see, he's going to use this as, as an example to us that even though we may experience spiritual floods in our life and, and spiritual fire, as it were, he is going to be with us as we go through these things. Verse 2 says, not if, but when you pass through these things. Uh, I wish I could promise you that, that because you're a Christian, you'll never go through any heartache, any sorrow, any struggle, any persecution. But I would be lying to you. You and I go through stuff with a capital S. But the promise here is, as we face these things that are seemingly insurmountable and, and even deadly at times, we have God's promise that He's going to be with us and protect us as we go through these things. Emphasis on through. Because it also says, but you will pass through these things. In other words, you'll go through them, there'll be an entrance, and then there'll be an exit in the name of Jesus, right? He doesn't just lead you to these trials and these struggles and just and just leave you there. He gets you through. Tell the person next to you he's getting you through. He is. And that's the promise this morning. 
We must look at every unpleasant situation as temporary. Temporary, Pastor. I've been struggling with this for years now. Even if you have to struggle with it till the day that you die and see him face to face, it's still temporary. Amen. Tell the person next to you it's temporary. it's temporary. I guarantee you, by the grace of God, everything you're going through is temporary. Either he will, he will relieve you of it in this life, but definitely, 100%, he will relieve you of it in the next life. Because there is no unpleasantries in the next life. There, there are no sorrows in the next life. And that's the hope we have as a believer. But what I want to give you this morning is some, some practical things from other places in Scripture that communicate to us how we get through these struggles, how we get through the floodwaters of life, how we get through the fiery trials of life. Are you ready for this? Yes. Turn with me to, to Joshua chapter 3. Turn back to the beginning of the book. Actually, it happened to be the sixth book in the Bible. Joshua chapter 3. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to write down one thing that seems overwhelming. One thing that seems like it's just flooding your life. Go ahead and write that down. There's a space there in your notes. One thing that's overwhelming you right now, because you and I must apply this specifically to our life. If we don't, then it's just a nice a little story that we're, we're going to read here. But we must apply it to our life. Go ahead, write it down. Let me, let me see people write it. There you go. See, that makes me feel good. Very good. Write down one thing that seems overwhelming to you right now. What I want to do is look at, at four points from Joshua chapter, chapter 3. Are you there? Yes. Joshua chapter 3. Now, many of you know that... that uh, this is the generation that will actually go into the promised land, the land that was promised to God's people. They are on the threshold, say threshold. threshold. And, and there, now there's only one thing that stands between them and the promised land. A massive, overflowing river. And, and uh, there's no way, there were no helicopters back then. There, there are, are no other means except God moving supernaturally in, and miraculously in their life. So it says here in, in chapter 3, early, say early. early. Isn't it good to, to get up early? I mean, once you're up, isn't it good? Yeah. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. Verse 2. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out, say move out, move out, from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about a thousand yards between you and the ark. Do not go near it. And some of you realize the power that was manifested around this, this, this article, this, this particular uh, this particular item that God uh, commissioned them to make, gave them instructions to make. In, in this ark where there were the Ten Commandments was a, was a rod, uh, Aaron's rod that had budded, right? And, and uh, a jar of manna. You remember how God provided those, those 40 years? God told them to put this stuff in this box. And it wasn't a large box. It, it was, it was you know, just rather small. We, they were, could carry it around and so forth. But it represented the presence of God. Say the presence of God. And then verse 5, he says, uh, it said, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, quote, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel. So they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Isn't that something? Joshua didn't exalt himself, but God said, I'm going to exalt you. I'm going to use you mightily as I did my servant Moses. Verse 8. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's water, go and stand in the river.